In February of 2024, I made a couple of videos demonstrating a Talo Quadrature radio frequency mixer and showing how one can be used to make a software-defined radio receiver. I'll put links to those videos below, as well as links to more sources that I'll mention later. A viewer asked me about doing the reverse, using this kind of mixer to create a software-defined radio transmitter. This is possible, and I had been wanting to try it. So this video is a demonstration of a crude, software-defined radio transmitter based on a Talo-style quadrature RF mixer. The transmitter upconverts low-frequency signals to radio frequencies RF. In contrast, the receiver downconverted RF signals to audio frequency signals. Here's Dan Talo's paper on the quadrature mixer. If we scroll down towards the bottom, we'll find a section on the quadrature upconverter, and Dan sketches how to use it, but this section is a little bit vague. NA5Y has built radios, not just demonstrations, using the Talo paper techniques. Here's his schematic for an upconverter. Definitely check out his YouTube channel for videos on this. Links below. Here's my setup. I borrowed from NA5Y, but threw away everything not needed for a demonstration of a very crude and very low power transmitter. My transmitter cannot be received more than a few feet away. That's important for avoiding interfering with other uses of radio. If you want to broadcast for real, get an amateur radio license and learn from NA5Y and others how to do it right. You need RF filters. My demonstration uses the same SN74LV4052A analog switch chip used in my receiver videos and an MCP6004 quad op amp and also some resistors and capacitors. The ADALM2000 provides the single power supply, a single 5 volt supply, quadrature square waves for the local oscillator that defines the RF transmit frequency, signal generators for the I and Q signals that define what gets transmitted. These are low frequency analog signals. You could use a PC sound card's output channels instead. And also the ADALM2000 provides a spectrum analyzer and oscilloscope to view what's going on. The ADALM2000 is a sort of electronics lab that fits in the palm of your hand. It's like a cheaper version of an analog Discovery 3. I'll put a link to my ADALM2000 overview video below. Soon, I'll show the system in action, but here's the full transmit receive path. The ADALM2000 produces LO signals at 1 MHz and the IQ signals. It's commanded from the Scopy application software on a PC. The breadboard circuit mixes I and Q with the LO signals to form RF, which is sent out the antenna wire. Another antenna wire feeds an SDR Play RSPDX receiver. Its SDR Uno application filters, tunes, and demodulates the RF and plays audio on the PC speaker. Before diving into the demonstration, I need to say a little bit about how I and Q signals are used to form modulated signals for transmission. We'll start with the case where I and Q are sine waves. After that, we'll examine the breadboard circuit in more detail, and then we'll show the breadboard transmitter sending single sideband AM, narrowband FM, and finally regular dual sideband AM without carrier suppression. But first, let's talk briefly about IQ modulation. By using I and Q signals the right way, many modulations like FM, AM, and digital modulations like phase shift keying are possible. I won't go into this, but I will include links to videos by W2AEW below. But consider this simple case. LO is 1 MHz. Both LO and LO phase shifted by 90 degrees must be fed to the upconverter. Let I be a simple 2 kHz sine wave and let Q be 0. In this case, we'll see that the RF contains both a 0 0.998 MHz signal and a 1.002 MHz signal. That's LO plus and minus 2 kHz. These two signals are called sidebands. But now make Q a 2 kHz signal phase shifted 90 degrees from I. Now the RF output has only the 1.002 MHz signal. The lower sideband has been suppressed. This is the basis for a modulation called carrier suppressed single sideband, specifically upper sideband. Doing this for voice is harder. Voice consists of many sine waves, each of which must be shifted by its own 90 degrees. This requires a math function called a Hilbert transformation, but we won't go into that. Let's look at the system in action. This is the Scopy application controlling the ADALM2000. So we'll check its settings. The power supply is set to generate 5 volts, just the single supply. And then the pattern generator is used to generate the LO signal and the LO signal 
phase shifted by 90 degrees. So you can see here, this signal zero is LO, and that's one megahertz. And this D1 is, is LO phase shifted 90 degrees. You can see the phase shift. And then for the signal generator, that generates um, I and Q. The orange signal is I. And so that's set to generate a two kilohertz um, sine wave, two volts peak to peak. And Q is set to generate the same two kilohertz, but with a 90 degree phase shift. But initially, we're going to disable Q. And then let's see, the spectrum analyzer is up here. So we can run the power supply, turn that on, turn on the pattern generator, turn on the signal generator, and run the spectrum analyzer. And just as we predicted, we see two frequencies in the RF. The one on the left here, you can see it's about 998 kilohertz, and this one is 1.02 kilohertz. So that's working as we expected. But now if we go back to the signal generator and we enable Q, the 90 degree phase shifted signal, that should suppress the, the left signal. And notice that it's, now it's down a whole bunch of dB. So only the, only the upper side band is, is not suppressed. So working as we expected. And now we also have SDR Uno running. So that's behind here. If I turn it off mute, you should be able to hear that two kilohertz tone. So back on mute, and you can see that SDR Uno is tuned to one megahertz with the upper sideband modulation. So it's all working as we expected. Here's an LT Spice model of the breadboard circuit. It's running at nine volts instead of five and is using different analog switch and op amp chips. You can pause and have a look. You can run this model and have a look at the FFT. It also gives the expected two output signals when Q is disabled, so that's helpful. And here's the actual breadboard circuit, but still showing the wrong analog switch chip. I'm using an SN74LV4052A, actually half of one since it's a dual switch. NA5Y uses both switches on a dual part, but that requires his filter and RF combining circuits that I skipped. The breadboard op amp is an MCP6004, this is a quad rail-to-rail -rail op amp. VCC is 5 volts, but notice the use of a virtual ground, VG. It's created using the voltage divider on the left. VG is 2.5 volts. I and Q center around it. LO and LO shifted 90 degrees are actually digital control signals. See my first video on the Talo mixer for how that works. It's the same here. Notice on the lower left that I and Q are capacitively coupled to the ADALM2000 signal generator pins. This prohibits the use of constant I and Q signals and complicates doing plain old AM where the carrier is not suppressed. I use a trick to make that work. I'll show it later. The op amps are all unity gain inverting amplifiers. The left two just serve to buffer I and Q from the signal generator. The right two phase shift I and Q by up 180 degrees. This way, we feed the analog switch with signals delayed by 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. Remember that Q starts out shifted 90 degrees from I. I connect RF out directly to the antenna wire and also to an ADALM2000 analog input to drive the spectrum analyzer. It's all pretty simple, but to be a good transmitter, I would have to add a low pass or a band pass filter to the RF output and perhaps some amplification. NA5Y shows this, but it makes the circuit much more complicated, and I hesitate to do RF filters on a breadboard. It might work at 1 MHz, I guess. We're back at SDR Uno. I'd like to try sending voice using some actual modulations instead of just sending sine waves as I and Q, but that means I have to have some source of I and Q data. I could write software to create that from an audio file, or use some pre-existing um, SDR software, but SDR Uno has a nice feature. If I select this IQ out up here, and what it will do is actually send I and Q data on the two stereo channels of the audio output for whatever little region that I've tuned. And then I can use Audacity to process that file and create the files that Scopy needs for its signal generator. So that's what I did. I recorded samples of narrowband FM and SSB and, and also some regular AM. So let's take a look at that. The Scopy signal generator has a very nice feature. Instead of just producing waveforms, you can click on buffer, and then you can load a file, and whatever you load 
the, will, will contain the values that will be sent out on the signal generator when you run it. So here for, for I, we can load a file. And let's see, pick wave. And we can load I SSB 1600 wave. Do the same thing for Q. Buffer. Load file. Wave. And Q SSB wave. And then we can start it running. And go to uh, SDR Uno. And then if we pick upper sideband and go off mute, we should hear it. About a five six uh, when you came in. Now you're down to maybe a, a four three. So now let's see what happens if we pick lower sideband. And you don't hear it. And that's what we expect because this is an upper sideband signal. There is nothing on the lower sideband to, to receive. And that also kind of proves that the 90 degree phase shifting is, is working for SSB like we discussed before. Now let's try FM narrowband. So we'll stop the signal generator and load files for FM. And then start the signal generator and go back to SDR Uno. And now if I unmute, it'll sound wrong because I've got the wrong uh, modulation. But we'll pick FM narrowband. Lows in the mid 70s. South winds 5 to 10 miles for any width. And we hear the signal pretty well. So now I'm going to take it off mute and I'm going to go back to Scopy and show that both I and Q have to be present for this to work. Friday night, mostly cloudy. Lows in the mid 70s. Turning off I. South wind. With a slight chance of showers and turning off Q. in the afternoon. With a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Highs in the lower 90s. It's really nice that Scopy automatically keeps the I and Q buffers aligned even though you turn them on and off. It's critical to making this work, so that's a very good feature. I've loaded files for the AM example. And notice that the Scopy signal generator even lets us scale them, so I can set them both to be be doubled from one volt to two. And that can be handy if the signals are at a low level. So now I'll run, and we'll go to SDR Uno and try to listen to AM. So I'll have to pick the AM modulation. Uh, let's give him a nice warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Salgado. And so you hear something, but if you're sharp-eyed you, and know SDR Uno, you might have noticed a problem. There should be a carrier right here. And there isn't. We're still able to hear the signal because we're receiving one of its sidebands, and AM can do that. But it would be better if we were tuned so we could see the carrier. So I have to tune like so. And now you see the carrier, and it might even sound a little better. Go with us right now via telephone, directamente desde Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's give him a nice warm... So why do I have to do that? What I did is when I recorded the IQ data for AM, I actually recorded it with the tuning offset a little bit. And that was to avoid needing to record anything that's sort of exactly at the LO frequency. The capacitive coupling of the, of the I data going into the breadboard, I and Q data going to the breadboard, causes that to, to not work. You, you can't use a constant value of I or Q. And, uh, that's always a problem in, in this kind of radio design, actually. Things that are right at LO are problematic. So the trick is to tune offset a little bit, and um, then it works. Via telephone, directamente desde Las Vegas. And let's see, notice all this junk down here in the main waterfall display? That's proof that our transmitter is not clean at all. It's producing all kinds of noisy junk which would be completely unacceptable in a serious transmitter. So let's go to Scopy and turn off the signal generator. And now all of that junk is gone. So that's proving that all that noise came from my transmitter lacking any sort of output filtering. So cl clearly that's not a good thing. But it's amazing and good that you can 
use it for a demonstration and hear things as well as you can. So now with the with transmitter off, these are all just local AM stations in my area. And uh, that's a little bit of noise there from the, from the LO. The last thing I want to do is to show you I on the oscilloscope. So I've switched the signal generator back to using the sine waves. So we can go to the spectrum analyzer and see, see the peak that we expect. So this is the rightmost peak and the left one is being suppressed. I've switched this to, to working with channel two now because I connected channel one to the oscilloscope. So now I'll stop the spectrum analyzer, go to the oscilloscope and run it. And we can see that this is the eye signal. Let's kind of convince it to trigger and uh, turn on the measurements. And so you can see that this is two kilohertz. The mean is about 2.5 volts where the virtual ground is and that we're about two volts peak to peak. I wanted to show you that, you know, given the capacitive coupling. I'll end this video here. See below for links to lots more information. And thanks for watching.